Hey guys, I'm Ezra and in this Lord of the Rings Rise of War video I'm going to show you a guide about Khaldun's new meta build. Since my first and last video of Khaldun is outdated, it's like 10 months ago, here is the new build and how to min-max your Khaldun. As of now, my Khaldun is at level 31, I haven't been leveling him right now. He is respect level 16 and as gear pieces I have these items over here and let me go quickly over them. I would like to introduce to you the best in slot items to Khaldun. I don't own them all, I just have a few, but let's get started with the gigantic hammer. So this definitely is the best item in the game for Khaldun, but the special effect I have right now, that's not the right one. What you want is the special effect Frenzy. The one that can trigger another normal attack per round. And that truly is best in slot, but let me go over to the items and show you what I actually mean. So you want this special effect frenzy over here as a best in slot equipment. And there is a reason for it, but I will show you that when we move over to the build. So that is his weapon as best in slot. Then as is the chest piece, you do have the warbone battle plate. You can either go with resilience of soldiers or even better, the one called fortitude of soldiers. Because fortitude is flat damage mitigation for all sources of damage, be it physical or elemental. Then as your helmet, you do have two options. The first option would be the cask of submerged isle. That is the best in slot option for Khaldun because of the effect called Aegis. You are going to run a three army composition, three unit army composition, and that is vulnerable against madness and also stun. But with this, you cover those weaknesses. Now, you do have a secondary good option being the Cask of Pride. It's giving you tons of might and uh, defense. Defense means physical damage mitigation, but this helmet also has the effect Fortitude of Soldiers. That too is flat damage mitigation. It goes so well with the already high damage mitigation of Khaldun's build. And also the other pieces like Warbone Battle Plate has Fortitude of Soldiers too. All of that damage mitigation is going to add up. But the Cask of Pride will make you vulnerable to Madness and Stun. Which is why I prefer the Submerge Isle Cask over the Pride Cask. Alright, and then as your accessories you have two options. The first option is Drums of Baradur. Universally speaking this is just great. You want to run Might of Soldiers or Iron Guard. Now Iron Guard is my favorite when it comes to the campaign Tactics Evolved because some units like the Half Trolls have Haven as a special effect and with Iron Guard you don't just only provide self-sustain for your units but also you trigger the additional damage mitigation of Haven. If you don't have it you can still work with Might of Soldiers. Maybe even with Grudge of Gundabad I still have to see some battle reports coming in and see how viable the Reapers are with Grudge of Gundabad. That is one of your accessory options, but there is another one being the Palantir of Orphank. There is a special reason for this. You just need Tactical Mark. Whenever there is a Grima or Gilgalad encountering you, you need this or else you will have a hard time sustaining that fight. Anyway, these are the best in slot options. Let's move over to the build and let me follow up with my explanation why I consider the Gigantic Hammer with Frenzy the best in slot weapon and special effect for his build. And it's not just only me, it is the math that is proving it. And I have to thank Shilki as well as Instant for providing all of this information. So having a look at Khaldun, remember he is just at level 31 since I haven't leveled him right now. But the meta build for him would look pretty much like this. You want to max out Marshal of the East, also Quicksand for the additional damage boost and a chance to stun. Just look at this, your melee units, they get a chance to reduce the damage you receive. This is great, all of your melee units. And instead of having three evil man units, in this case you will have two melee units paired with Reapers. Which is also the reason why we don't max out tribal tactics anymore. In my first video we did, since we had three evil men. But the meta has changed in so far that Reapers have become unreplaceable. Whenever somebody specializes in enhancing melee units, you always want to have Reapers. But Reapers don't benefit by tribal tactics, 
So let's skip it. Even maxed out, it is not a high enough chance to give you a lot of value. Instead, these points are spent better somewhere else. Once you have taken care of these skill points, you are ready to go back to your respect zero tree. Now you go to the top and you go back and forth between experience, warrior and hunt down. There is a reason for it. Since you have the gigantic hammer with frenzy, you can proc hunt down twice and your frenzy also benefits by the damage boost of this skill and then whatever leftover points you have you just spend between easterling evil alliance and iron guard you go back and forth between these abilities and guess what your frenzy special effect also has a chance to trigger this debuff so per each round you can trigger this debuff twice that is insane like look at this you have this as a debuff you have this as a debuff and frenzy is proccing one two three skills and if you were to put one point into collaboration your normal attack would be enhanced with additional physical damage as well so frenzy can proc what frenzy benefits from easterling from experience warrior from hunt down also from collaboration and let's see what else we have over here and venom like, and Venom is also something you can proc with Frenzy. So this is why the Gigantic Hammer with Frenzy is unreplaceable for Khaldun as best in slot weapon. Anyway, let's go back to the build. So remember, I'm level 31. I would still have at least uh, 19 points left. And I would distribute those points between these abilities over here. If I still have any more points left, one point into and Venom, and then go back and forth between Brawler and Spear Dancer. Like two points into Spear Dancer, one point into Brawler. And there you go. This is the new min max Khaldun. If it comes to the troop composition of Khaldun, you can run something like this an equal amount of Reapers, Half Trolls, and Dragoons. If you don't have access to Half Trolls, you can also run, let's say, Halberdiers or. Imagine if you are running with Baryax, in that case you can replace your Dragoons with your T4 units like champions. In case you are in let's say Rune, you may change out your Dragoons with Chariots, that too works. So you see Dragoons can be replaced with Champions or Chariots while your Half Trolls can be replaced with Halberdiers. In the battle reports you will have a much better idea of the troop composition. Just copy what you see with the player i'm about to show to you the report you are seeing right in front of you is one of our best Khaldun players in fact in this season the player called instant is the best Khaldun in our campaign and that guy is so absurdly strong with his Khaldun that i just wanted to share his reports by the way thank you instant for providing us all of these juicy reports so let's get going Khaldun has these items over here gigantic hammer with rent and let me tell you he is waiting for Frenzy to drop. Up until now, he was just unlucky that Frenzy never dropped. Just to give you an idea how rare it is. But if he gets it, you will have even better reports than this. Warborn Battleplate with Fortitude of Soldiers. That's amazing. Cask of Pride with Fortitude of Soldiers as well. And Drums of Paradur with Iron Guard. Look at this skill distribution, guys. This is what you want to replicate. Like this guy is the best Khaldun as of now. Then half trolls with Haven because of Iron Guard. He is making them bulkier. He has Reapers with follow up and Dragoons with solid metal since we are fighting a meta revolving around ranged units. So that makes sense. This is the outcome. Look at this. This is crazy. Gandalf the Grey has these items. Gigantic Hammer with Giant's Power, Scale May with Melee Vigor, Grey Wizard's Hat with Tranquility, and Wizard's Fireworks with Ranged Might. Overall, this is a meta build Gandalf the Grey. You can't complain about the skill distribution. And then his units have Dispersion, Rangers of the North with Haven, Dunedines with Traveling Light. And in the snapshot page, we see that Khaldun has done almost 280k damage versus around 70k damage that is a huge difference and here you see who has done the biggest chunk of damage it is reapers after all but Khaldun has also provided some nice damage the next report is against the t2 aragorn so let's check out the gear but i assume nothing has changed yeah that's pretty much the same constellation look at the army composition this is something you would like to imitate just copy what you are seeing over here let's check out t2 aragorn Battle Axe with Flay, 
Superior Hawk with Fire Protection, Fulham with Melee Vigor, and even Star Undomiel. This is the damage dealing Aragorn. Everything is maxed out for Aragorn to do the damage. He has Guardians with Divide and Conquer, Cataphracts with Remedy, and Keepers with Traveling Light. Interesting. I thought that the special effect with the follow-up would be much better. Anyway, let's check out the snapshot page. Almost 290k damage versus 90k damage. Again, a big difference. Afterworlds and Reapers have done the biggest chunk of damage. Here we are fighting Eomir. Look at the items, nothing has changed. Let's check out the troop composition. You see a bit more heavy on the half trolls. And then Eomir has these items Cutlass with melee might, Scouts made with deftness, Horseman's Helm with mounted vigor, If Lane with mend, and this build over here. Let's check out the troops, Cataphracts with Remedy, then Ram Riders with Divide and Conquer, Cavalier with Rise Up. In the snapshot page, we see that Kaldun has almost done 400k damage, that's insane, versus around 100k damage. Reapers did almost 190k damage, that is just crazy, and Kaldun as well as Half Trolls did around the same amount of damage. We also have a fight against Theodem, let's check out what we have done over here. Gear and build stays the same, and this Theoden has these items over here. Cutlass with melee might, Orbuck with fire protection, Osman's helm with resolve, and Meara's reins with might of cavalry. And, alright, this is a Theoden I do like. He has maxed out mounted combat and also chaotic retreat. That is what he needs. It's also a high respect level Theoden. He did put one point into Cleave to have the high speed stat work in favor of uh, scaling this skill. That makes sense too. So also one point into flanking because just by putting one point into this, you start to chip away a bit of HP. Like one point invested into something that is good, giving you good return of investment. That makes sense. But still, this is as far as he goes. It's a very expensive army against this. In the snapshot page, we see Kaldun has done around 330k damage versus around 180k damage. Reapers, again, always end up dealing the biggest chunk of damage, followed by half trolls and Kaldun. I have two more reports to share with you guys, and this is with uh, Gan of the White now. As you see, Kaldun has the same gear, the same build, nothing has changed. Gan of the White has Glamdring, two times refined. He has Elven Cloak with resistance. Grey Wizard's Hat with Tranquility, Find Smoking Pipe with Second Wind. And as I see, he has a decent amount of respect level. Like the skill points make sense. I can't complain about this Gun of the White, one of the best Gun of the White players I have seen. Then he has Sharpshooters with Light Armor, Guardians with Shield Training, then Guards of the Tower with Divide and Conquer. But this is still the result. This just proves how strong Kaldun is. In the snapshot page we see we have done 280k damage versus around 120k damage. Again, Kaldun, Reapers and half Trolls deal the main damage over here. And this will be my last report, so check this out guys. Kaldun, still the same gear and build, nothing has changed. And here Gilgalad has these items over here, Elven White Knife with Frenzy. And then High Elf Hobbock with Resilience of Elves, High Elf's Helmet with Fortitude of Archers, Harp of the Florian with Hunter's Mark. And the build also makes sense, like I can't complain about this guy. His units have these special effects, Dispersion, Keepers with Traveling Light. Like I wonder why people keep uh, picking Traveling Light. I would have preferred the follow-up, definitely follow-up because of the strong focus damage. This is punching through the thick defensive stat of units that have high defense stat. Anyway, he has heralds with light armor. So, this is the outcome. This is how strong Kaldun is. 260k damage versus around 120k damage. Again, Reapers did the main damage over here. So you see guys, this comp is very strong. By now, I think you guys get a vague idea how strong Kaldun is after seeing all these reports. And guys, by the time you get yourself a gigantic hammer with Frenzy, the outcome of your battle reports will further increase. Like, you will have much better reports than this. This is just the beginning. If you enjoyed this one, just like always, let me know by leaving a like, consider subscribing, and how about sharing the video that helps a lot in order to grow the channel. And that being said, I see you guys next time.